I am shocked, ashamed and humiliated. I messed up big time. Luckily, someone caught it. So last time when we covered materials, some of you pointed out that we could have used material instances down here. And you're absolutely right, but that was a deliberate decision for that tutorial. One decision, however, that was based on a total misunderstanding of Unreal's material model was this Fresnel term here. And luckily, one person caught it. Thank you, Luca. So after a bit of research and fiddling around in some papers, it turns out that Unreal's material model here is based on a slightly modified Disney principle shading BRDF, which you can read up in this paper here by Brent Burley. What this model tries is to simplify controls in a shader. And I'm really torn about this model because I think it sometimes misses the target by oversimplifying a bit. In the case of the specula, for example, instead of expecting an IOR value or a Fresnel term in its specular, it expects a value between zero and one, defining what's called F0. So what is that? Let's go back to our visualizer here that we built last time and in our Schlick's IOR. Let's just increase or decrease the IOR. And F0 is the value at this point. That means the reflectivity of a face of an object with a given material, in this case, a material with an IOR of 1.72, when we're looking straight onto it. And you can see that base reflectivity increases with an increasing IOR and decreases with decreasing IOR. Let's reset this to 1.5. Now, this paper here documents what's happening in the shader in Unreal. And what we're looking for is this specular F term, which is calculated with this weird formula, employing these two magic numbers up here, which apparently is easier to calculate than the standard Schlick approximation while yielding similar results. And you can see as an input, this only expects the F0 term. That means the reflectivity when looking straight onto a material, which is what I implemented here in these few lines of code. So let's wire this in here as well, which is the green curve here. So you can see for an F0 of 0 0.08, let's try and dial this in using Schlick. You can see this is roughly around 1.79. And also, as Luca pointed out in the comments, there is a nice formula to convert an IOR, an index of refraction, into this F0 value, which is this formula, which of course I implemented in Houdini as well. So up here, we can just take an IOR. Let's take 1.78 and have a look at the resulting values. And we can see an F0 of 0 0.078 or roughly 0 0.08. And if we use that instead of our sliders value here in Unreal's Fresnel model, we can see we are getting this really similar curve. And this different knee that's different than the standard Schlick knee is the result of those magic numbers that Unreal Shading Model uses over the power of five formula that Schlick normally does. So what all this math blur means in the end is that using a bit of code, you can convert your IOR value into an F0 term, which is the reflectivity when looking straight onto a material, and then feed that into Unreal Engine shader model to get our expected specular and Fresnel behavior. Again, just resulting from the convention of using the Disney shader model, which tries to simplify shader parameters into as few parameters as possible. So for an IOR of 1.5 in our spreadsheet, we can see an F0 of 0 0.04. And 1.5 is an IOR that most dielectric materials in real life have, such as plastic or glass. So with that knowledge, let's head over to Unreal and fix the Fresnel term here by just deleting this, dropping down a single constant, which we're going to set to 0 0.04. Just copy this, wire this into our specular, and that should be the expected reflectivity here. Let's apply and save this and do this for the rest of our materials. Also, let's do this for our cutting mat here and for our glass material too. The specular should be 0 0.04 as well. Resulting in this shading here, let's have a look at this in the game and that is looking okay. Now, one thing that's still bugging me and that I'd like to address is the separation of those individual Lego pieces. While some of the pieces, such as this here, for example, are beveled and thus nicely separate from adjacent pieces in the rendering. Some of those pieces, such as those here or those in this area here, have only a slight or no bevel at all, resulting in the lack of definition in the individual Lego pieces here. And normally I'd fix that by using a rounded edge shader, at least in offline rendering. However, as of my research so far, I have not found any round edges shader in Unreal. And I suspect this comes from Unreal's heritage of not supporting ray tracing for a very long time, as most of the easier or standard round edge shaders employ some form of shooting rays or ray tracing. So instead of trying to cobble together a makeshift round edge shader, let's just go the sloppy way and chamfer a few Lego stones in Houdini. So let's build ourselves a Lego brick beveling machine in Houdini by dropping down a geo node first, diving in there, and then assuming we do have side effects labs installed, 
dropping down a labs obj importer because that brings in some of the material attributes and materials with it let's point it to the lego file we downloaded which we do have here brings in this file with this expectedly wonky cat geometry if we middle mouse on this we can see we've got a few attributes position and uv coordinates on the points and then we've got a path and a material path and we can see this path stores 177 unique values which coincide nicely with the number of lego pieces in this kit so let's use a for each loop and use the for each name primitive here with the piece attribute set to path instead of name to iterate through all these individual lego pieces let's check if it's doing that by clicking single pass highlighting this output node here and then just going through those individual pieces so what this for each loop does is it just takes each individual lego piece and then applies any nodes that are between those two for each nodes here to them okay let's have this iterate over all the pieces and to speed this up later i also want to compile them which enables the for each loop to be executed in parallel, speeding up the whole thing a good bit. So dropping down a compile block, just cutting this and the begin goes up here and the end goes down below the for each end. In the for each, let's just drag this down in the for each end and make sure that multi-thread when compiled is checked. Okay, let's just move those nodes out here and make some space because in here, that's where we're gonna build the machine. Let's just set this to run on a single piece here. For example, on this part of the car here. First thing I want to do is make sure that these points are fused so that those individual triangles are not quote unquote loose. Using a fuse node, just joining together any loose triangles if we had them in there. Next, I'm going to give this normals using a normal sob here, just wiring this in and setting our cusp angle to four to five degrees. Next, I'll put in a poly bevel, wire this in here. Set the distance to 0.15, that proved to be a good value in my previous tests, and we can immediately see that this polybevel now bevels everything there is, even on flat surfaces here. To exclude that, just drop down exclusion, check ignore flat edges, and when preparing this here, I found out that a maximum normal angle of 80 degrees resulted in decent behavior in my previous setups. Let's drag this down here and have a look at a few of those groups this thing can output. And I want to have everything that's created by chamfering these edges in a separate group. In this case, this means we'll need to get the edge fillet polygons and the point fillet polygons. Let's use a group combine to combine those two groups into one. So down here, gonna drop a group combine. Let's call this new group exclude and it should be equal to the edge fillet polys united with the point fillet polys. So now we can see that we have all those polygons that have been created by our bevel operation are now in a separate group. The whole reason why we created this group is because I want to give those normals with a different cusp angle than the rest of the mesh. Again, using another normal node, which I'll wire in down here. And in this case, I want to work on everything but the excluded group. We do that by using an exclamation mark before I exclude group and set our cusp angle to 35 degrees in our case. Also, I want to make sure that my weighting method here is set to be by face area, and that should be it. Let's try out the whole thing by going to the compile end here and unchecking our single pass. So this is what we're presented with. Let's just switch to smooth shaded here and maybe for now, just use an attribute delete, which I'll wire in here. And I'm gonna delete the shop material path. So this dark material is gone here. So I'm just gonna delete the material here. Just gonna copy this and wire in our untreated geo here. So I just did this here. And now let's add a switch down here so we can compare what we did. Wiring in both attrib deletes and highlighting the switch. And now I can switch between the beveled and the unbeveled mesh. And you can see, yes, we're getting a good bit of definition by beveling those individual Lego pieces here. All right, let's take this here and write it out. In this case, not as an OBJ, but Unreal is really built for FBX. So let's use the ROP FBX output here, wire this in like this, and just specify the file output. I will write it into the same directory as where my Lego file came from. Let's call this one Lego underscore car underscore beveled. Dot fbx let's hit accept and on our rop here it's saved to disk and after a brief time that should be done so back into unreal here let's go to our geo and in here let's add and import the lego car bevel we just wrote out in here just make sure to have combined meshes switched on and i think that should be it 
Let's ignore those warnings here. And this is our Lego car beveled. Now it's oriented properly and also has the right scale. That's really nice. So let's have a look at this. And you can see that indeed in those areas here, when you compare it to the old model, we're now getting a good bit more definition. So let's take our old car and just delete it out of the scene. Getting a warning here that we use this as an autofocus target in our blueprint. So we'll have to take care of that later. Let's accept this, take this car, just move it to the center. And in our blueprints here in the pawn, let's just go to the cine camera here, search for focus and just choose our newly imported Lego car beveled here and hit compile and save. So now if we hit play, we can see we've got a car that's a bit more detailed due to those fine beveled edges. So that is using a brief node tree in Houdini to give your Unreal Engine meshes some additional attention and thus more detail. And what we could do now is turn this into an asset, use it in Unreal using Houdini Engine. Let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. And in general, if you want to learn more about Houdini or Unreal, or if you just want to support us, you might want to check out our Patreon, which is where you can get access to more in-depth courses covering mainly, but not only Houdini. And to everyone already supporting us, thanks so much folks. Without you, Intagma in this form would not be possible. And a very, very special thank you goes out to Patrick Fillion, Important Looking Pirates, and Rafik Anadol. Thanks so much, guys. So until next time, as always, it's cheers and goodbye.